It's James Steinhubel with TVU, and I'm uh, here with uh, Tim Vant, and he is the originator of metaphysical <laughs> comedy. He's yeah, coined, yeah, he's he's coined it. He's on Instagram. He's got a big following. How are you doing, sir? I'm, I'm great. How are you, James? Very well, very are well. Are you in Sherwood Park? Is that right? I am. That's, uh, that's headquarters for TV. Well, I, I know Sherwood Park. You know, um, there's an actor from there. His name is Paul Dune. Uh, do you know Paul Dune? Not me personally, but people might be disappointed okay. that I said that because he's a we have real a large. Actor. Like he, he studied at uh, the National Theater School in Montreal, which is where all the real actors go in Canada. Anyway, <laughs> in in America it's Juilliard, but uh, yeah, uh, Paul Dune. I think I'm getting his name right, and and he went on to do Stratford. Um, I don't know where he is now. I think he got a sex change. Actually, I think he's Maria Dune now. Okay. I don't know. I don't want to say any more because I'll get myself into trouble. I probably <laughs> okay. have already. Well, what, so now, you know, we're talking about where people learn. Where did you learn? Where did you go to school? Oh, um, I went to public school, so I didn't really learn much. Um, I'm still learning. Every day is a learn. I'm learning from you right now uh, that the correct way to hang a flag is actually um, uh, uh, perpendicular to the ground, which I didn't know that. I thought you were supposed to keep it horizontal. So I'm learning as we go. I learn as I go every day. I did go to college. Um, I went to Grant McKeon College right in Edmonton. You probably know it. And I studied um, uh, flagrant dancing, uh, musical theater under uh, Tim Ryan. Do you know the Ryan family? Not me personally, but I'm sure our arts community does. Uh, Tim Ryan passed on, God rest his soul. Uh, but he taught me some conventional wisdom. And his daughters are still trucking along they're doing theater Bridget and um, you should interview them they're nice people uh, Bridget and Kate Ryan and if you look them up you'll find all kinds of Edmonton theater and maybe Sherwood Park too I don't know if you have a public theater in Sherwood Park or, or... we have we have Festival Place that is a wonderful place for theater and there is theater that is uh, that's done but we also have the Edmonton channel so you know of course Edmonton is vibrant uh, vibrant when it comes oh yeah to I, I remember arts. like a great community there a great arts community um, you know Michelle Todd I should give Michelle Todd a shout out uh, Nicole Granger I just interviewed Nicole Granger yesterday she does local theater um, and she paints there's lots of great arts going on in the community there in Edmonton okay so we've got a lot of uh metaphysical challenges that are happening in the community because of covid we know we're dealing with i was uh, hoping you weren't going to talk about that yeah. well you know what that's what the you know yeah, we have to we have to leave we have to leave a marker in history and it just happens to be that <laughs> today's, today's the marking day right history so is, is being made for sure that's yeah. right so you know people's schedules are being um shattered you know their routine uh, their routines oh, yeah. are now gone like, see, now we're, uh, you know, we're doing stuff that we never used to do before, right? We're, you know, um, social distancing. I, I don't think social distancing is, is a big deal for Canadians because we have such a small population percentage um, that really we've been social distancing since inception. I mean, you know, it's kind of like you see a guy over. I said, I saw a guy walking here this morning and I, I waved. I said, hello. And, and this guy was a real country gentleman, right? And he just ignored me. Hmm. So, he, so he was not only social distancing, he was like mentally distancing. It's like he had checked out completely. Hmm. So I think for Canadians, that comes naturally. Just this, this mindless, um, you know, oh, uh, Trudeau can go to the cottage, but we can't. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, I buy that. That's fair. <laughs> That's good. That's I, good. You know, I think it's totally fair. You know, if he can go to the cottage with his wife and, and hang out and hug and, and and have social contact i think that's great that's awesome i and i support that you know um and and i'll, I'll lock myself down here i'm not going anywhere because that's what they told me what to do right and as a good humble canadian i'm going to listen to my government and uh and behave myself <laughs> behave. and what about you know so schedules are turned to, what about routines you know like even what people have to do moment by you know moment by moment during the day or what they think they had to do is done. Now they're reinventing routines and, you know, where are you at? There's a lot of bored people out there. It's a lot of, uh, well, there's a lot of bored seniors anyways that were already retired, at least in this area. It's, it's a largely uh, 65 plus community. Uh, so they were bored anyways. I don't think much has really changed for them. 
other than, you know, their routine, like shopping. Now you have to line up like it's Gestapo tactics. It's like you line up like you're in a Nazi concentration camp. I don't know what your experience is, James, but it's, it's a little weird, right? Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is different. You know, it's, uh, um, it's almost like everybody's, uh, well, I don't want to go there now. No, no, the, no. Say it, say it, say it. Well, it, it's, um, it's like we're, you know, we're being, um, we're being managed is the feeling that I'm getting. Right. So yes, is, it, is it social engineering? Do you think like it's, it's not social distancing, it's social engineering perhaps, which they've been doing since the fifties. Well, the, and this is, uh, you know, you know, here's my view of, and I, people, you know, I don't talk about it a lot, but the, uh, this, this uh, virus that we have is, um, every country's got them, right? They've got them in their arsenals and the image that I have in my head with this virus from the uh, bio lab across from the fish market was it was a character like um, the guy that plays Newman in Seinfeld. Oh yeah. I don't know the actor's name, but yeah, he's great. Yeah. And then when he was in Jurassic park and he was trying to steal the, uh, steal the embryos and stuff. And so oh, I haven't it, seen that. That was, was that a Seinfeld episode? No, it's on Jurassic park. Oh, right. Yeah, he had a bit part, didn't he? That's and he, right. And, he's and then the he guy, got eaten. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he tries to steal the embryos. And before he's done, <laughs> his, his Jeep is going down backwards down a ravine. He's getting eaten alive by the dinosaurs. The vial breaks and all the dinosaurs. The second, was that the second oh, film? Or the that's third the first film? one. That's the first one. Is that the very first one? So he yeah. was in that right from the beginning. Yeah. So I, that's how I see this happen. Is it a weaponized, uh, we weaponized bioweapon? Hi, I maybe, but I think the. I don't uh, think so. I don't get the feeling, James, that it is. Um, it could be, but I don't think it matters because the real weapon is is in our heads, right? The real weapon that we're being injected with, if you will, is fear, and we have to remember that we're living, breathing, thoughtful residents of this planet, and these guys at the top, the one percent or the point five percent, whatever you want to say. Uh, I won't name any names. There's other people out there naming names. Um, they don't get to tell us what to do anymore. And I think they know that. And this is kind of a, a, a last ditch attempt at keeping us under this, this um, barrage of fear that we've been under since the first world war. And even before that, like maybe a couple thousand years. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Now, the other thing is, is as, um, possible emerging futures uh -huh. uh, appear to people in the form of uh, new moments there they in the before covid they could pretty well guess what's coming next now they can't people they're completely what's what's you mean happening like speculators like oil speculators they knew if the price was going to go up or down like before covid like i'm talking like i'm talking about people waking up in the morning and they don't even know what's going to happen next I think it's always been that way. I think each day is a, a gift. It's an adventure. Um, I think people should, instead of being afraid, you know, be, be excited, be charged and go, okay, how can I adapt? How can I thrive in this environment that's even tougher than it was before? How can I, what can I achieve now that I couldn't do? I mean, I don't believe in this thing, oh, before COVID, after COVID, because that's what they want. They want this to have impact us the way that 9-11 did, the way that SARS did, the way that MERS did, I should mention, I was in Toronto uh, under SARS. I lived three blocks from that hospital that they locked down. Nothing was happening. They put up some white tents and they put on a, a, a nice parade. Sure, a few people were sick, but it wasn't worth destroying the tourist economy in Toronto. It wasn't worth, you know, uh, tearing down what took the Mervishes, Ed and David Mervish, 20 years to build. They built a nice theater community and overnight, Nobody was coming up from Roth Rochester. Nobody was coming up from uh, upstate New York. They killed the tourist industry for years to come. Hmm. Hmm. Unnecessarily, I should say unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now people are um, being put in a position, young people are, people who are born now, I'm saying for the, say the last 15 years, Technology is uh, instrumentality. It's, a, it's, it's not even at the end of their fingertips. It's literally part of them. They were but, born with it in their yeah, hand, right? But yeah, now people, so 
pe people that were born, say, before, let's call it uh, 1985, let's call it that. Well, I just turned 25 myself, so I, I guess I fall into that. <laughs> yeah. They, I guess I fall into that category. They, uh, they you so know, I remember, I remember what it was like before. I'm just kidding with you, James. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. So yeah, now, remember. now the human machine interface and the interaction with uh, technology is instrumentality. Um, yeah, like old people. Do you play are, an instrument? I, I play the piano. Do you play an instrument? I, I don't, I don't play. I'm not musical. I'm not musical. I'm, oh, what uh, a shame. Cause I'm, I'm looking for a bass player. And I thought you, you were maybe just enough of a character to be a bass player. <laughs> you know, They're I, hard to find. I, They're I, even I, harder to keep. So people, you know, people now having to pick up machines to engage technology to have their life feel more normal. Right? Yep. Brand new, brand new to feel normal. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I feel, I feel abnormal and I've always been a little bit out there, right? Like I had a... In an interview yesterday, I said I had an actor, acting teacher that said to me, hey, Tim, this is not a cartoon. And, you know, I've always come from outer space, so this was a difficult concept for me. It was, oh, how do I be, you know, uh, genuine? And now we have a lack of character in our, in our, our society where everybody is, is in this lockdown naturalism mentality where they're afraid to have their own opinion. You have this herd mentality where it's like, oh, all these people over here say that social distancing is a real and correct thing to do. So I'm just going to jump on that bandwagon. What I want to see is people maybe having, having their own thoughts, you know, go on the social media, but don't get addicted to this herd mentality, you know, have an original thought in your head. And I don't care if I agree with you or disagree with you, but have something to say. Don't just follow the crowd. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, uh, so before I let, before I let you go, you know, in these, uh, in these times and, uh, and where we're at, uh, anything that you have that you could share with our viewers and listeners that will be valuable at this time. Look up, look up. Excellent. Excellent. Tim Vatt, metaphysical comedy, Thank Thanks you, sir. On, James. Yes, and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you next time. Thank okay, you so cheers. much. Yep. Okay, Good bye night. now.